a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell, and the AccuWeather forecast is right across the top of every CNC local news page. Rochester area antique secondhand store and pawn shop owners went before the Monroe County Legislature Tuesday night with their reactions to a proposed law that was intended to cut down on resale of stolen property. The business reaction amounted to, you gotta be kidding. The owner said it would pose a severe burden on small business. It would have required them to keep an online database with pictures of every item they buy from the public for resale and to hold those goods in storage for two weeks before putting them on sale. They'd also pay $250 a year for a county operating license. Legislators tabled the law after a string of nine business owners spoke against it. It was introduced by Webster Republican Carmen Gamina. He wanted it to help track and recover stolen goods, but the business owners said it would drive up their costs and could force some of them out of business. Gamina says now he'll talk to the business owners and hold a public hearing about his idea before he brings it up again. Governor Andrew Cuomo and district attorneys from around the state announced new legislation Tuesday that would toughen up New York's public corruption laws. This is following the arrest of two state lawmakers and some New York City area political figures last week on federal corruption charges. Governor Cuomo said the Public Trust Act would create a new class of public corruption crimes and make it easier for prosecutors to bring charges against public officials. The law would also impose tougher jail sentences for misuse of public funds. And it would permanently ban anyone convicted of public corruption from holding any elected or civil office in New York. They would also be barred from lobbying, receiving state funding in any way, or doing business with the state in any way. The act would bring state law in line with the federal standards, trying to bribe an official, corrupting or defrauding government, and failing to report a bribery attempt would all be crimes. It's less than two weeks until people in Arundaquate vote on whether or not they want to build a new central library. The last of five public meetings on the project is Wednesday evening in the Broderick Room at Town Hall. It's at 6.30 p.m. The referendum is on Tuesday, April 23rd. East Arundaquoit School District residents vote at the Ridge Culver Fire Department on Culver Road. West Arundaquoit votes at the St. Paul Fire Department on Cooper Road. The proposal is online at libraryproposal.com. Briefly, the plan is to close the two current libraries, which are 50 years old and have only 12,000 square feet of space apiece. A new 60,000 square foot building with community meeting rooms would go on the Town Hall campus on Titus Avenue next to Town Hall. Portland Avenue had to be closed near the intersection with Central Park early Wednesday after an early morning car crash that snapped a utility pole in half. Despite the impact that brought down the pole on the wires, nobody was hurt in the crash. It happened about 2.30 in the morning. The road was closed for rush hour, but it's back in service again. The internationally known flu experts at the University of Rochester Medical Center are looking for 20 volunteers willing to face 12 days of isolation to help them find out which bird flu vaccines are likely to work and which are likely to fail. The study is testing live virus vaccines against two variants of the avian influenza. A research team headed by Dr. John Trainer is hoping to find a genetic marker that will let future scientists know quickly which new vaccines are likely to actually protect people from the flu and which are duds. These are live virus vaccines, the sort that gets sprayed up your nose. They work faster and protect better than the conventional flu shots. They're also faster to make. They work by giving you a weakened version of the actual live virus so your immune system gears up against it in a hurry. But sometimes the virus refuses to take hold in actual patients and then the vaccine is a failure. To find out why, the URMC team will give a vaccine it knows works and one that should work but doesn't to patients. They'll check blood and nasal cells regularly to see what's going on in there. Volunteers have to be between 18 and 42, in good health, not pregnant, not allergic to eggs. To see if you qualify for a study, call 585-273-3990. You will have to spend 12 days at St. Mary's Unity Campus. 
The Brighton teenager who rammed a car into a school bus last fall probably will not face jail time. John Zachary was in Monroe County Court Tuesday morning. His lawyer and assistant district attorney Ray Benitez told the judge they're working out a plea agreement. Benitez said Zachary would spend five years on felony probation, perform community service, and have his driver's license suspended. Zachary is 16. Brighton police say he was driving a BMW that rear-ended the school bus on Warren Avenue in October. The car ended up partly jammed under the bus. Zachary and the three other teens he was driving home from school were hurt, two of them seriously. He has been indicted on charges including assault, reckless endangerment, and speeding. The prosecutors say the victim's families agree that this is appropriate punishment. The next court date is June 4th. Family and friends of community activist Lawrence Richardson gathered on Dayton Street in Rochester Tuesday afternoon, one year after he was shot dead in a still unexplained homicide. Richardson started life on the street until he became involved with the city's team empowerment program, got a mentor, and eventually he became a leader in that program and an anti-violence advocate. Why was you losing your life while well, I was on the verge of losing mine? You telling me life is too short to throw it away in the blink of an eye. Police still have no suspects in his murder. The family is hoping the remembrance will encourage someone to call 911. The Greece Central School District has announced the dates for the 2013-2014 budget process leading up to the school budget voting day on May 21st. The budget proposal is just over $206 million, an increase of $6.9 million, or about 3.5% with much of that due to mandated spending increases, such as state pension costs. The school tax levy will increase by about 3%. The whys and wherefores are on the school district website. The formal public hearing is 6.30 the evening of May 7th at the district office. Community discussions are May 9th at Long Ridge Elementary School and Arcadia Middle School on May 13th. And you remember the talk of New York becoming a Greek yogurt center for the nation? Well, as they say in Canada, no word of lie there, eh? Alpina Foods in Batavia says it needs to expand just over half a year after cutting the ribbon on its brand new plant in Batavia. The $18 million yogurt plant opened in September. It was the company's first U.S. production facility. Now the company is installing a second 20,000-gallon milk storage tank to boost production, essentially doubling the capacity. New York is now the leading state in the nation for yogurt production. Links to these and other stories are to the left of the player window at the bottom of the page. Links you can use to post information directly to us. Share what you've seen, what you've caught on your cell phone. Next news is as it happens, updates as necessary, and you can help us be the judge of that. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.